In this tutorial, we'll walk through how to add inputs to a GitHub Actions workflow using workflow dispatch trigger events. This makes our workflows more flexible by allowing us to configure things like tag names, deployment environments, or configure other values that we may need. We'll work through four specific examples, adding a freeform text input, adding a predefined set of single choice inputs, add an input for selecting a target deployment environment configured in our repo or GitHub organization, and finally, how to combine multiple inputs into a single workflow. If you're unfamiliar with workflow dispatch triggers and how to add them to a GitHub Actions workflow, check out the previous video in this series. You can find the code for this tutorial on GitHub at gubar-dev slash GitHub Actions Tutorials. For this tutorial, I'll be working out of IntelliJ, but you can follow along with any IDE or text editor you want, just as long as you can push your changes back to your GitHub repo. We're gonna start with the basic workflow dispatch example from our previous tutorial. This workflow can be started manually from the GitHub UI, and we'll simply echo some output to the workflow logs. We'll expand on this example to demonstrate how to add different input types to our GitHub Actions workflows. Our first input type will be a simple freeform text input. So we will create a copy of our workflow here, and we will rename this workflow dispatch freeform input example. Next up, we will update the name of the workflow so we can find it more easily in the GitHub UI. We'll call it workflow dispatch freeform input example. And now we'll start adding inputs to our workflow by adding an inputs section under our workflow dispatch config. Within this input sections, we can then define the names of inputs we want to accept from the user when starting this workflow. Here we'll create an input named environment. This input will represent a backend environment that we want to deploy to. For any defined input, we can add things like a description or whether or not the input is required. In this case, we will write a simple description indicating that this input is the environment to deploy to. We will mark it as required and we will populate a default value of production indicating that by default, we want to deploy to our default environment. Lastly, let's do something with our input. Inputs are kind of meaningless unless we actually use them to modify the behavior of our workflow in some way. Since this input represents a desired deployment environment, let's log out which environment we're going to deploy to. So we can do that by coming down here to our line where we are currently echoing some output to the workflow logs. And we're going to update this string to say deploying to, and then we want to reference the input value provided when the workflow is started. So to do this, we'll use a dollar sign followed by two open curly braces, and then we will end with two closed curly braces. Now within this, we can get access to the GitHub context followed by the event context, inputs, and then finally, the name of the input. Now notice here, the name here needs to match the name specified in the inputs section. And then I'll finish off my message here by saying environment. So when this runs, whatever input we specify when starting our workflow, we should see that printed out in our long message when we print deploying to blank environment. Once this workflow is checked into your default branch, you can run it from the GitHub Actions UI. So I will navigate to the Actions tab in GitHub, and I'm going to scroll down to the freeform input example. Now, like any workflow dispatch event, I can then click the dropdown here and notice that we now have a freeform text field in which we can enter the environment name that we want to deploy to. 
We've also set it to production as a default value, so we see that production is pre-populated in this text input field. We are free to change this to anything we want. In this case, I'll change it to dev, and then I can run the workflow. In the workflow output, we should be able to see our log message correctly displayed as part of the echo command that we added. We see here, deploying to dev environment, which is exactly what we would expect. Now, let's continue with more examples. So far, we've been using this freeform input to represent a deployment environment. This works fine, but doesn't provide any guardrails to protect against invalid inputs. Namely, you wouldn't want someone to be able to input a deployment environment that doesn't exist or that they shouldn't be trying to deploy to. To help with scenarios like this, we could define a single choice input that provides a predefined set of values from which the user can select a single input value. To demonstrate this, we will once again copy our workflow here, and this time we'll rename it to workflow dispatch choice input example. And I will just update the workflow name so we can identify it in the GitHub UI. And now to update this, to use a choice input, we need to do really three things. We need to add the type attribute to our input with a value of choice. Then we need to add an options list representing the predefined set of choices that we want to make available. So in this case, I'll use production, QA, and dev. Now, finally, we want to make sure that the default value, in this case, production, matches one of the option values. In this case, it does, so we are good to go. Once we do this, and again, check it into our repo, we can test it out back in GitHub. Back in the Actions tab, we can select Workflow Dispatch Choice Input Example, and we can come back to Run Workflow. And here we see that we have our deployment environment list represented as a drop-down menu. And we see that production is pre-populated, and I can select other deployment environments as needed. If in this case, I chose Dev and clicked Run Workflow, we can then examine the output of that workflow, and we should see soon enough deploying to QA environment. So again, the workflow recognized our input and printed it out to the console as we would expect. So what's great about this again is that we can provide that default set of values, making it easier for someone to understand how to use this workflow and making it harder for them to run it in a way that is not expected. To continue on with our exploration of inputs, we're going to look at the environment input type. So far, we've been defining our own inputs to represent deployment environments. But as it turns out, GitHub actually provides a specific input type for this use case, the environment type. This will automatically understand any GitHub environments configured for a repo or for an organization, and then provide those as input selection options for the workflow. So one more time here, we're going to copy our workflow and create a new one. This time, we will call it workflow dispatch environment input example. Now, rather than use the manually defined set of environments like we did with the choice input, we'll change our input type to environment. And we will remove the other options. And in this case, we will remove the default value as well. So this one is much simpler, but you'll see we end up with something that looks very similar to the choice input, but scoped to just our pre-set up environments. So now that we have our more simplified workflow here, how will the workflow actually know what possible options there are? Well, as we mentioned, the environment input type recognizes repo or org level configured GitHub environments. If we go to the settings for this repo, and we scroll down here to environments, we see that I have pre-configured a prod environment and a dev environment. Now, if you aren't familiar with GitHub environments, that is a tutorial for another day. 
check out the playlist. Uh, we will have a tutorial for this at some point. For the purpose of this tutorial, however, we can now go back to our Actions tab, select our Environment Input example, click Run Workflow, and we see here that we still have a dropdown, but this time it's populated with only those environment options. So say this time I might want to select prod and I will click run workflow. And then we should see the output in our environment was correctly picked up and we see deploying to prod environment in our output. So as you might imagine, using the environment input type is a really nice way to ensure workflows are only deployed to pre-configured environments. This is a very common scenario and I highly recommend using the environment feature if you're not already. To round things out, let's look at one last example. This one is already set up for us, so we're just going to explore some of the interesting elements of it. In particular, there's two interesting things in this workflow. The first is that we are using multiple inputs in the same workflow. That's why we have unsurprisingly enough called it workflow dispatch multiple input example. Notice here that we have an environment input that matches much what we've been doing so far. We also have another input here named notify with a description of notify to deployment. It is a required input and it is of type Boolean. This is actually the second interesting thing here. This is a Boolean input. Not something that we've used before, but very useful if you have things that really are a true or false, yes or no type of input. And with other types, we can provide a default value here, this time of false. So if we view this workflow back in GitHub, we'll select the multiple input example, go to run workflow. And here we see the same sort of modal window that we've been working with, but this time just with an extra input. See that our Environment input still has the dropdown, and our new Boolean input gives us this nice little checkbox here with the description next to it so it's clear what checking that box is meant to represent. If I check that to on, and let's say leave the dev environment selected, we will run the workflow, and when we examine its output, we should see the deployment job was run as well as the notify job being run. So if we look into notify, we'll see deploy to dev. And in deploy, deploying to dev environment. So if we just examine the workflow one more time, we'll notice here that the environment was correctly picked up in the log for both of these outputs. But additionally, we were able to use that Boolean notify input to apply some conditional logic to the notify job so that we would only run that notification step. Maybe it's notification to Slack or sending an email or something else, but it's only going to do that if we have actually selected that Boolean input. Um, so that's just one simple example of how you might leverage the Boolean input and combining inputs to build more complex workflows. This completes our look at workflow dispatch events on GitHub Actions workflows. We explored four different input types, freeform text, choice input, environment input, and finally, Boolean input. Each of these have unique use cases, and they can be mixed and matched as needed to suit your needs. By leveraging inputs with your workflow dispatch workflows, you can build reusable workflows that also provide guardrails and sensible defaults making your workflows easier to use by everyone on your team. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. For more on GitHub Actions, check out the rest of our GitHub playlist here at Goobar. Until next time, devs.